Hey, what's going on everyone? It is the chicken coming to you live talking about growing a fall garden. Two types of them on this actually not that bad Tuesday afternoon. It's about 75 degrees. I don't know how your day's been going, but my day's been going pretty good. Be sure to comment how your day's been going down below before you get in. Subscribe and let's do this everyone. All right, so there's two types of fall gardens that we're going to talk about. The outdoor one like this one and the indoor one. The indoor one will be second and a timestamp if you are in a growing zone below 8A is on the screen right now. Anyways, join me on my garden harvesting journey as well as talking about the outdoor and indoor gardens of fall. All right, so we're going to start off with best practices for a fall outdoor garden. So the first thing you want to do is you want to double down on seeds, especially if like, let's just say you have a massive seed pack that you want to reuse for the fall season, right? You, what you're going to want to do is you're going to double down on planting more seeds. So instead of planting one per hole, you want to plant two per hole. So on like that, you can reuse certain plants. So let's just say you have, I don't know, like, let's just say somehow, some way our peppers are still alive. You might be able to reuse them. Here's the thing, my little notes over here, as long as the lifespan goes outside of the spring garden season. Anyways, be sure to monitor the weather fall is, you know, common for hurricanes. You know, I'm pretty sure there's like going to be like, some people are saying there's going to be like a category three or four on the Florida coastline tomorrow. So be cautious if you have a garden and then always plant your most valuable in pots. That way, if it gets like frosty or snowy outside, you can move them right into the house. Still looking for stuff to harvest in here, man. And you want to, and you want to plant all the plants before, right before the end of the spring garden season. So for me, that's around late September. For you, that could be like early October. So get them all in before early October. So we can transplant these out here for November. So I found my thing that I want to harvest. So there's a harvest and another harvest. And we're also going to be talking about some products that you should be using for your outdoor garden. So, so if you want some ways to keep frost from forming, here's some of the products I actually found after doing like two and a half minutes of research. You use the hoop and plastic, which is sort of like a greenhouse, but like you can, you know, like, you know, like move it. It's sort of like what you do with broccoli sometimes. Like some people have like cages over their broccoli to, you know, protect it from all the like moths and stuff like that. Cause you know, moths and broccoli, they don't really like each other for whatever reason. So yeah, that's what people use for that sort of stuff. And also, I also found that you could bring the pots inside. That's an easy one. But then there's also like, you know, frost blankets and stuff like that that you can easily get. And then also weed block. You see how I'm walking on this over here? Weed block is gonna be a must for any outdoor garden, especially if you're down like, you know, like really south of Atlanta, then you should probably be using weed block because trust me, the weeds are gonna go in unless it's like freezing cold and snowing every day. And trust me, there will be some weeds that are trying to, you know, grow in and try to take over your garden that's a nice aroma i just got and also add some plants protective plants specifically so you know how like see that was a very nice uh, word crack there if you know how um tomatoes like you know basil because like those two helps out each other oh, helps out each other oregano keeps the deer out of the garden i'd recommend plants like that because if you're really far in the deep south oh yeah you're definitely gonna get some pests that want to eat your garden all right, and then there's the best plants that you could plant in your fall garden. There's the tomatoes, peppers, carrots, lettuce, collards, eggplants, basil, and oregano, etc. for your beginner's tier. Your more intermediate tier, so someone that has like maybe two years of experience, cucumbers, green beans, gourds, pumpkins, corn, fruit trees, strawberries, stuff like that, you know. Now, I should have included blueberries, but you know, they're a little bit more on the annoying side and they can even be maintained in the outdoors during the winter, even if you're in a lower growing zone, as long as you cover them up. That's what we do over here. And then more advanced here. So gardeners like, so let's just say I was also someone that gardened in the fall season. Let's just say somehow you could actually do that stuff up here in the Northeast. Well, I'd probably be in the advanced here because I typically count someone that does three or more consecutive years more advanced. Cause you need know, to get the feel of the garden they know what they're doing. They're professionals at this point. I'd recommend zucchini, squash, asparagus, sunflowers, grapes, and raspberries. Now, why I put raspberries there instead of on like the more intermediate here? Because deer, deer suck. And they're not really a plant that you usually plant in the garden. Oh, that's my cool little rogue sunflower. Last year we had the rogue tomatoes. This year we have the rogue sunflower. All 
right, so if you're like me and are stuck in a lower growing zone below 8A, well, here's a good thing for an indoor garden. For yourself, best practices, you want to mount the plants on a windowsill or in a room with grow lights. I'll talk about those in the products section in a minute. You want to keep the room at like 65 to 75 degrees. So that way it's like sort of like outside. You also want to like supply constant water, but make sure it's like inconsistent. So that way it's more like, so that way the plants feel like they're outside. And then you can bring some plants in from the spring garden. Like I know some people that are like, take like the best performing tomatoes and bring them in. And then you should also double down on pots and also seeds as well. Rotate the plants every four days. So what I mean by that is like move them around a little bit. That's what I'd recommend. And then you wanna monitor the soil moisture, four to six hours of sunlight a day, man. You know, I get a little bit more than that cause I'm a chicken YouTuber, but like, you know, I want you to make sure they're getting at least four to eight hours of sunlight per day, preferably closer to eight. And then you want to grow each herb in a different pot and provide good ventilation. Plus your plants will die. All right, so now we have the product list. We're going to start off with hydroponic systems. Now this is for like really advanced people, people that know what they're doing. Grow lights, pots, soil. So I'm going to monitor their soil moisture so they like don't get too much water. Oh, there's a stupid horsefly up here right now, yo. And then a drip pan. So maybe like a saucer I've heard some people call those. I call them drip pans. And also I should harvest this tomato right here for the first one in the entire flip. There you go. And that was it for the products. Now let's go on to the best plants. And by the way, this video is not sponsored. However, I have some products coming in a couple days possibly. Now, so best plants, you want to check and see which plants can be grown on a pot. So if you look at like some seed packs, you know, some of them say they're container friendly. Those are the ones you want to double down on. So you want to, so here's a list. So you know like broccoli, tomatoes, basil, zucchini, cucumbers, peppers, cabbage, collars, and eggplants, and stuff like that. Those are the ones that can be grown in the, uh, what's it called, the containers. Anyways, now we're gonna cut to the outro, but while doing so, you can enjoy my chickens having some tomatoes. All right, so if you enjoyed today's video, I have another one waiting for you on the screen. That one, it's one YouTube thing, so you'll enjoy, click on it, because you know, YouTube systems are pretty accurate. Anyways, I'm out, bye.